The goal for this video series is to create a basic but good looking data science blog for free with minimal effort. This is what the final product looks like and it was surprisingly easy to build and didn't even require much coding from me. In this video, I'll show you how to get your site up and running, but in future videos, we'll cover how to add data science content and how to further customize your site to really make it your own. But before we get started, you'll need three things. First, a GitHub account, which you can create for free. Second, you need to install Jekyll on your computer along with its dependencies, and I'll put a link to this documentation in the description. And third, you need an IDE or some kind of text editor, but here I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code since it really integrates well with GitHub. So you may be wondering, why GitHub Pages and why Jekyll? Well, GitHub Pages is great because it can host your Jekyll Jekyll site for free, GitHub has great collaboration tools and version control, Jekyll is a static site generator that can turn your markdown files and layouts into a full HTML site. So what's really nice here is that we don't need to make a new HTML page for each post because we have layouts. We just need to make markdown files which are a lot easier. So let's get started. So the first step is going to be finding a website template. Now you can build a site from scratch with Jekyll, but there are thousands of templates online that have a lot of the boilerplate code already set up for us, so we don't need to do a whole lot. Here are a couple links I'll add in the description of places that you can browse for Jekyll theme. Once you find one you'd like, go to the GitHub repo. So the theme I'll be using is called Clean Blog Jekyll, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the live preview. We've got our main home page, which shows us some of our most recent posts. We've got an about page, our post page, which shows us all of our posts that we can click through. And again, these posts can be generated for markdown files and don't necessarily need a lot of code to be written for them. And last, we have our contact page, but we're gonna go back to our GitHub repo and go to the top, and we're gonna click Fork. But essentially, forking the repo creates a copy of the website's repository and it adds it to our own account. That way we can make our own changes and our own website. And we also need to rename the repository. So we'll go to settings over here. And for repository name, this is pretty important. It needs to be your username.github.io. So my username for GitHub is data slice YT. So I'm gonna make my repository name data slice yt.github.io. And it's important you set it up this way so GitHub knows that this repository is a GitHub website. And we'll click rename. So now we're gonna locally clone the website. All these files right now are in GitHub, but we wanna get them onto our computer. That way we can modify them. Normally, if you scroll down, you'll see installation and setup or something similar in the readme of the repository. And generally, you'll be fine following those steps. If I scroll down a bit, it specifically has steps for using core files, starting with cloning the repository. So this is what I'm gonna follow. So in order to clone the repository, I'll go back up to the top. I'll click this little green button and I'll copy this link. Now I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code and click on the source control button and then clone repository. And I'll paste that link that I just copied, hit enter. And I'm just gonna select a repo location for it to copy the files too. Then I'll go ahead and open my repository. And you can see in Visual Studio Code on the left, all the files here are also the files that are in my GitHub repo. So I've locally cloned it to my computer and now I can start modifying the files. And if we go back to the steps, it says we need to update our config.yaml file. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and build our site to run locally. But before I modify my config.yaml file, I just want to give you a brief overview of the Jekyll site structure, because in general, they'll be roughly the same. So this config.yaml file stores our site configuration data. Now in general, when you have a Jekyll site and you make modifications, they'll appear live on your site just from refreshing the page. But any changes you make to your config.yaml file, you'll need to actually stop your server and then restart it to see those changes. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. The includes folder usually contains snippets of HTML code like your header or navigation bar. So we define the HTML code here and we later embed them onto our pages. Next is the layouts folder. These are templates or layouts for our different pages. The idea is we could have one blog post layout for our blog posts, but if we make minor changes like changing the format of the date under the title, we'd only need to do it on the layout page. And then all of those changes would be propagated to all of our blog posts. The post folder contains all of your blog posts, and both HTML files and Markdown files are supported here. The SAS folder generally has where you'd create SAS files that turn into the main CSS file for your website. You'll also notice that there's some CSS files or SCSS files under assets. And you may have some other folders like bin, image, and posts that are specific to your Jekyll templates repository. And I'd recommend just taking a quick look at them just to see what kind of files are in there. And then in the parent folder, again, you'll have the config file. You may also have some other HTML files that are actually the main pages on your website, like about.html, contact, and index, along with some other files specifically there for Jekyll for your website to be able to compile, like the gem file and the Jekyll theme clean blog.gemspec file. So just like the readme in our repo says, we're going to update our configuration settings in our config.yaml file. I'm going to make the title data slice. I'll put my email in. I'll add a description, put in the author. For the base URL, I'm going to leave this empty. This is the text that would show up at the end of 
your GitHub website. But because this is the only GitHub website linked on my GitHub account, I'm going to leave the base URL empty. And I'm going to replace URL with data slice yt dot github dot io. I'm going to also remove all the social profiles for now, just because I'm not using any. And I'll go ahead and save this file. And then it says step three is to build our site. So I'll go ahead and copy this command bundle exec jekyll serve. And in VS code, I can actually go to view terminal and I'll paste my code and it should start running a local server for you. You might have an error that comes up that says you don't have the dependencies. And if that's the case, you just need to run bundle install and then bundle exec jekyll serve. But once you get your site up and running, you can go to your browser, go to localhost 4000, and you should see what looks like the live preview we looked at earlier, but now with your own title, description, and other items that you configured in your config file. All the posts are still here. You can tell from the post folder, we have the corresponding files, but I'll remove that in a later video. So once we've done our main website configuration, we want to go ahead and commit these changes back to our GitHub repo. That way we can view our website, not just locally, but also on dataslice.github.io. So we're going to stop our server and really quickly, you'll actually notice this new folder here in gray called site. And each time we run the command to start our server, Jekyll is actually taking all of our content here and generating a static site that our browser can interpret. And it puts it in this site folder. So that's actually what GitHub is doing too, through GitHub pages. It's generating a static site so we actually don't need to upload this folder back to github and you'll notice in our git ignore file which tells us what folders to ignore you'll see that site is in here but anyway to commit our changes for the config.yaml file we'll click on our version control button in vs code type in a commit message so i'm going to just call this basic site configuration and we'll go ahead and stage and commit these changes so now we've locally committed our changes but now we need to push it back to our github repo so we'll go down here to push one commit to origin master and hit ok and now it'll actually push these changes back to our GitHub repo. So if we go back to our repo and refresh, you can see that I made a commit 43 seconds ago called basic site configuration. And if we go to dataslaceyt.github.io, we see our live website here. So that's all for this video. And in the next one, I'm gonna cover how to add blog posts, both manually written and directly from RStudio. I know that everyone may have varying levels of experience. So if any of this was confusing to you, I just want to point you to a couple more resources that I'll also link in the description. If you want to learn more about Jekyll, I'd recommend the Giraffe Academy tutorial series. Most of what I learned is actually straight from these videos. For HTML and CSS, I'd recommend W3Schools. And for more information on GitHub pages, I'll share this link to the Getting Started documentation. And as always, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.